today uh, we will perform the experiment uh, the object of the experiment is to calibrate milliammeter using a potentiometer so uh, we have to calibrate a milliammeter and we will use to calibrate this milliammeter uh, using a potentiometer and apparatus we use is a dial type potentiometer so you can see that this is this is a dial type potentiometer this is you can see the dial is here this is the whole potentiometer you can see we have a wire here of like uh, 100 centimeter length so, and this is the dial that means if this is this dial is at 1 so we are getting the length 100 centimeter and then if this is 2 this we give 200 centimeter similarly if we get uh, this dial at 10 we get 1000 centimeter of this length okay so this is the jockey so which we will see the deflection we have certain knobs here we have for battery we have for the galvanometer and then for the eliminator okay so this is my dial type uh, potentiometer and uh, the second thing is the battery battery eliminator a standard cell so we have two battery eliminator we need one is here one is here we need an, a standard cell of uh, emf uh, and then we have a galvanometer milliammeter rheostat we need rheostat we need two rheostat one is here one is here we need a galvanometer you can see here we need a, a milliammeter and we need a 10 ohm resistance and a two way key okay a two way key so these are the apparatus we need uh, to calibrate a milliammeter using the potentiometer okay so uh, uh, actually we need a correction factor to see the calibration that is i prime minus i this is e by l1 multiplied by l2 by k this is also known as this this whole factor is also known as k okay this is k so this is i prime is basically this and minus this i so i and i prime represents respectively the current read by the potentiometer and the milliammeter and k which is this e by l1 is the potential gradient we will try to find it out e is the emf of the standard cell which we use and l1 l2 denotes the respectively the length of the potentiometer wire so length of this wire basically uh, at the balance point corresponding to the emf of the standard cell and the current i prime measured by the potentiometer and r this r we will use this r denotes the resistance across which the potential is measured so r which we are using is of 10 ohm okay and this so emf of the cell standard cell which we we, we are using this is a standard cell which we are using is of 1.0186 volt and the resistance r is 100 ohm so first of all uh, let us uh, try to so the circuit the whole circuit is looks like uh, you can see is this so this is this is our uh, potentiometer dial type potentiometer okay so we have to let us start from the upper one which is uh, for a standardization process so we have uh, this B correspond to this battery of the potentiometer so you can see that uh, let me say this B let me put it here like this first this b so this b is a positive negative so this is positive negative so and this is my real state so this is my real state we have one variable connections and two below this is fixed connection one is variable connection so this is uh, for real state and we have battery b1 which we are going to use this here Okay, so let us do this connection. So you can see that the variable of the real state, this this variable, this upper connection of the real state, is going to the negative of the battery. So I have made it. This one is going to. You can see this is going to the negative terminal of the battery, and the positive terminal of the battery is going to the positive terminal of the real this potentiometer battery. So the positive terminal of this is, you can see, is going to the positive of the battery on the potentiometer okay and this negative of the battery on the potentiometer is going to uh, the fixed connection of the real state okay so this negative terminal is going to uh, you can see 
is going to the fixed terminal of the real estate. This is this is for this connection, and then we have uh, galvanometer is is directly connected to the galvanometer of uh, this potentiometer. So we have galvanometer here uh, of this potentiometer. This so you can see that galvanometer is connected directly uh, to this position. Okay, so here and the potential. Now the rest is like this part E positive negative. We are here. So this is here. Uh, the potentiometer E part. So you can see the negative of this uh, potentiometer E is going to the upper of uh, uh, the two way key. We have one, two, three connection is there. One, two, and three connection. You can see we have. Uh, you can see we have three connections. One, two, and three. So you can see it's one, two, and three. So you can see the negative of this E is going to the upper connector. Uh, upper port of uh, this two way key. So negative if the of E is you can see I have connected you can see is it's coming here. So the upper of this two way key that's okay. And then uh, this part is okay. And then you can see from let's do this one. So this is real estate. These are the two fixed connection and one is variable connector. So this is like this is the variable connector and these are the two fixed uh, connections of the real estate. So uh, the variable connection of this uh, uh, real estate is going to you can see the negative of the milliameter. Okay. So you can see the variable of this is going to the negative of the milliameter and the milliameter positive is going to this port of the two way key and this the positive of this is going to this port of the two-way key. Okay, so uh, because you can see two wires here from this port, one is going to the positive of the millimeter, and one is going to uh, uh, to this 10 ohm resistance. You can see two connection is there. One is going to the positive of the millimeter, and the other is going to the one port of the uh, resistance. This part is done. Okay, and then we have what we have. We have the real state. This the fixed connection is going to the negative of the battery. So the one of the fixed connection, this is negative of the battery, this black one, you can see is going to the one of the fixed connection here. Okay, fine. So this part is done. Now you can see here this wire is all together going here. So if if we can take, I have made this terminal, uh, this terminal uh, common terminal. So from this terminal, this fixed terminal, this this one fixed terminal. So you can see this from this fixed terminal why I have one connection, one wire going to the positive of the battery, another is going to the resistance, okay. So one, two and then either on this or on, on this terminal E. So if I take three wires at this fixed position of the real estate, one will go here positive of the battery, one will to uh, the real, uh, this uh, resistance and one will go to this because this is already connected here. So what I have taken, I have taken three wires. So you can see, so one is going to, uh, as you can see, one is going to, one is going to the positive of the battery. You can see, this this is one. One wire is going to the positive of the battery. Okay, and you can see one is going to this. You can see here the resistance 10 ohm positive and 10 ohm and then E. And then another one you can see is here is going to the positive of the E. So this is this is the whole connection. Very simple. You have to go uh, port by port to connect it. It's not a very difficult connection. And this and this you can see the jockey is here and the dial is here. So the so jockey is here is already internally connected and the dial is here. So now let's move to uh, uh, taking the observation. So in the first observation part, uh, let me on my this one. What we have to do, I have to uh, consider this this one. Uh, this is called the standardization of the potentiometer. You can see this is this is called uh, the standardization of the potentiometer, and the observation table is uh, we will discuss this for later. But in standardization of the potentiometer, we we don't need the this circuit. The lower one. We need only up to in the circuit the standard cell, not these milliameter and all this. 
will cut the circuit from here so if if we if we keep it open this port and uh, close it then this standard cell will only uh, will come into the circuit and not this uh, milliammeter on all this part so if this is open then uh, I, the circuit is completed till here so i'm going to use the standard cell only in the circuit right now so i am going to close this key this key so where i'm going to close this key where the, my standard cell is uh, this this standard cell is connected so i'm going to close this key so now this part is open where this re resistance and this milliammeter and the, these are connected so when this in the circuit only the standard cell is connected so i'm going to standardize my shell uh, mm, mm, as, uh, do the standardize, standardization of the potentiometer and for that what we have to do we have to put this knob to uh, to 10 because we know that uh, uh, the EMF of the cell is uh, is 1.0186 okay so this is basically uh, what I'm going to do is like when we put it here 10 and this is the length is 100 so I'll make it the length of the wire becomes 1000 and then what I will do is uh, what I will do is I'll put this uh, jockey uh, to uh, 18.6 18 is here and then 2 to 4 and to 6 so I'll put this to the 18.6 okay let me do it to the 18.6 Okay. When I choose the 18.6, I can see the deflection in the galvanometer. You can see. Let me show you the deflection in the galvanometer. What's this? Okay. You can see in the deflection in the galvanometer. So when I, when I put the jockey at 18.6 and keeping the dial on 10, so the length is 1000 and there is a deflection in the galvanometer. So what I have to do using this real state, I, I have to make the no deflection. I have to make the deflection at zero. Okay. So let me do is keep on keep on track on this. So we will see that uh, whether this is going to be zero or not. So now you can see the deflection is on this side. So this is little bit here, and then you can see this is this is at zero. Now you can see the deflection it at zero. So let me adjust a little bit more and then see, okay, the reflection is, is going this side. Okay, let me adjust some more. So you can, you can just readjust it and, and put the jockey at 18.6, 18 18.6. 18 and you can see try to make the adjustment zero just a little bit more so now see there's no now there is no deflection so what i have to do i have to find this null deflection by adjusting the real state putting the dial at 10 and keeping this at 18.6 if the length is of 50 50 centimeter then this dial will be of 20 length okay so that now you can see that uh, here he, here you can see uh, the dial is at uh, 10 and the length is of 100 centimeter and then the jockey length is 18.6 so if this is 10 and this is 100 it's become 1000 and then 18.6 become 101 18.6 so the k potential gradient which i told you earlier that's e by l1 that is e is emf of the cell is 1.0186 divided by l1 this length is 10 to the power minus 3 volts per division so the gradient potential gradient of this potentiometer is uh, uh, 
uh, 10 to the power minus 3 volts per division. So this is this process is called the standardization of uh, the potentiometer with the help of uh, the standard cell. That now we know that how much length of this uh, is corresponding to the EMF of this cell. So this is the first part in this we have to note it on the observation table 1 which is known as the standardization of the potentiometer okay in which we just have to keep in the circuit the standard cell by using this port and opening this 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 part of the key not including this and uh, milliammeter and this part of the real state that means i'm not i have not included this lower part of the circuit just the standard cell is included in the circuit so this is this process is the standardization of uh, the potentiometer so next we will do uh, uh, the calibration part in the calibration part, the observation table reads at like these are the serial numbers. So, milliammeter reading, milliammeter we will vary it by 10, 20, 30, 40, 200 because you can see uh, the range of the milliammeter is 0, 20, 40, uh, 200. So, we will make it 10, 20, 30, 40 uh, kind of this with the help of the real state. So, uh, this we will this will fix and then by fixing this uh, what we will do we will try to find out the balancing length of the potentiometer which is L2. So, uh, uh, then how to find the balancing length there we will have the reading of the dial and all these things and then we will find out uh, the calibration. So, in the second process what we will do we will, we will uh, 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 take it uh, close this key and this key one okay this this key also so for calibration we what we do we open this key and then close this one okay so we close this one so now the uh, standard cell is not in the circuit and this 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 uh, resistance and this milliammeter is included in the circuit as as we we have seen that i have opened this and i closed this one so this all now is in the circuit uh, so what we do now when when we do this close this and then by using the rear state this one adjusting the knob we will fix this at like 10 milliampere okay so we'll fix this at 10 milliampere okay so this is 10 milliampere and when we do this uh, first we will put this knob to zero and then we will try to find all when we uh, put the jockey we will see the deflection in the galvanometer okay so you can see the deflection in the galvanometer what we have to do is we have to find the balancing length on this so that we get the null deflection so you can see that the deflection is there so if i keep on increasing see if i keep on increasing the deflection is there increasing the length you can see increasing the length deflection is coming towards zero we have to make this deflection zero so if i keep on increasing i'm going towards the hundred so it still it's not going coming to uh, zero so that means i have I, i'm finished towards this hundred that means at zero to 100 centimeter this is not the balancing length so what i'm going to do i'm going to make this uh, zero to one so now this becomes now let's see the deflection is at this side so so i'll i'll now i will go this side so you can see this is coming closer to zero i'm moving this side so now you can see you can see the deflection let us make me deflection to the zero so at this position deflection is almost zero so you can see the deflection is almost zero. So let us check whether this is 10 or not. So it is slightly more than 10. So let me first make it 10. First make it 10 and then 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 readjust it. Okay. So you can see. Now you can see the null deflection at zero. So at this length, at this length, which is, uh, which is, I'll see that. Uh, let me see that this is at uh, like, I mean 4.2. 
this is as 4.2 uh, there is a null deflection okay 4.2 there is null deflection so what I have to do is and the length of the dial is the dial is at 1 and the length is like 4.2 so what I have to do is I have to I have to this is as 10 10 milliampere the reading of the dial is 1 here is 2 hours is 1 so we will write it 1 here and then length of the sliding wire is 4.2 in our case so here it is 10.5 in our case it is 4.2 and this L2 L2 is calculated by A this is length this is dial multiplied by 50 here but our length is 100 so we will use 100 plus and B is uh, the length of the sliding wire which is 4.2 so we will calculate according to that so in our case it's it's uh, it's I'll say in our case that we have 10 milliampere uh, this one but this is this is one this is a is one a is equal to one in our case and this b is 4.2 b is 4.2 centimeter in our case and then this is uh, l2 so the l2 is basically a multiplied by in our case we have 50 we have 100 plus b so we have 100 and then we have plus b is our 4.2 so this will be 100 4.2 this will be 100 4.2 lt will be 100 4.2 in our case and then i prime l2 is divided by r so when l2 is 100 4.2 and r is 10 ohm so this 100 4.2 divided by 10 so this becomes this becomes 10 point so here 11.05 hours become 10.42 milliampere this k 10 to the power minus 3 goes into the milliampere so i was 10 milliampere which we have which we have from uh, the milliammeter but uh, from the potentiometer what we have calculated is 10.42 here in our, this case was 11.05 but in our case is 10.42 this is more closer 10.42 more closer to 10 so the difference you will take the difference so 10 minus 10.42 this will be only 0.42 so our is calibration is more closer than this this is the difference is 1.52 correction is 1.05 but the correction in our case is 0.42 okay so now this this is the one process similarly we will keep on increasing uh, the milliammeter reading from 10 20 30 40 uh, by by increasing uh, this using the potentiometer 10 to 20, 20 to 30, and 30 to 40, and so on. We'll go, we'll go till 100, and then by uh, by by using this dial position, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we will try to find out the balancing length by getting the deflection on this galvanometer zero, which has been done like this: 10, 20, 30. Find out the dial position and the balancing length as is as we did in case of 10, and calculate L2 divided by 10 and then use the correction factor so this is what we all we have to do in the calibration and then after finding all these observation we are going to plot the correction factor with respect to the i which is you can see here so the, on the y axis we plot the correction factor i prime minus i which is this correction factor it could be uh, positive negative both it's in this case this is only positive could be we can have like 10 in case of 10 we have 10.42 maybe in case of 50 we can have uh, 48.2 so the, the the correction factor will be negative so so we have to plot this i prime minus i on the y axis and the i on the x axis and then we'll have a something a zigzag like this some points may go to the negative side and some may go to the positive side so this is this is the calibration graph and this is this is how you do the calibration of a millimeter uh, using the potentiometer so I hope uh, this is okay and all these we have to write in the results that the given millimeter has been calibrated using the potentiometer a graph of zigzag shape is obtained by plotting the correction factor against the millimeter reading and yes uh, uh, the graph uh, really shows uh, uh, the calibration of the millimeter and these correction factors are giving us uh, the strength of the calibration uh, which we have done whether it is good or bad thank you